The Reds could have acquired Dylan Cease in the offseason. So let's talk about if the White Sox next opponent did trade for him. The Chicago White Sox have gotten better players. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And hello, I'm Todd Welter, a lifelong Sox fan going back to attending my very first White Sox game back in 1989 at Old Comiskey Park. Yeah, I'm that old. And I am the site expert of Southside Showdown, part of the fan sighted network. This is Locked On White Sox, part of, your, part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts like Spotify and Apple. Also on the uh, YouTube channel, make sure to smash that like button. And hey, five-star review, I'd really appreciate it because we're now on episode two for me. Um, I think we're on episode like 700 for Lockdown White Sox. Uh, but yes, I am uh, in my first week as the new host taking over for Nick after a brief hiatus um, of this podcast. So the White Sox are staying in Ohio. Uh, they lost a three-game series to the Cleveland Guardians earlier this week. They head to uh, Cincinnati to face the uh, four and four Reds for a three-game set. You're going to have uh, Chris Flexen on the mound tonight for the Sox, while the Reds will counter with Andrew Abbott. Now, the Reds have been picked by many to win the uh, NL Central, as they had a solid season last year, 82-80. and 80. A Very exciting lineup. Uh, a lot of young talent, but uh, starting pitching last year kept them from making the playoffs. And the Reds, they had 17 different starting pitchers last season, and only one had an ERA under four. And as you know, Dylan Cease was on the trade market, and the Reds were rumored to be a landing spot for him. Uh, so why not, instead of going over the matchups of a series the Sox are going to probably end up losing, it, you know, the, the Sox are, are officially the get right team for pretty much every team in the uh, major league in Major League Baseball. And I'm even talking about the Oakland A's. They might even be worse than the A's and they might be even worse than the uh, Colorado Rockies. So instead of going over that, let's tackle if the Reds actually traded for Cease, uh, would they have gotten better? Would the Sox have gotten better players in return? Uh, today's episode, though, is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus. That's guaranteed. That's $150. Bucks. Win or lose, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So as we know, uh, the other thing that we'll go over uh, in the show today is, um, you know, jam-packed. Uh, what is it you do here? I'm going to do a segment. I'm going to try that uh, every week. So we're going to tackle uh, Martin Maldonado, who's doing absolutely nothing right now. And then we're going to switch into uh, Corey Lee. He needs to play a lot more, obviously, than Martin Maldonado. But uh, let's get into and uh, this segment that I'm going to do first with Dylan Cease to possibly the Reds if that happened. I know it's a huge hypothetical. Uh, it's jam-packed with information. So we may move that into the second segment and then just push everything down to the third segment. But anyway, so we know Cease was traded to the Padres during spring training. Uh, the Sox got reliever Steven Wilson. He's been solid with a 150 ERA and a .67 whip in six games. He was projected to be the Padres' primary setup man. Uh, the Sox also got pitching prospects Drew Thorpe. So at the time, he was the 85th best prospect, according to MLB Pipeline. At, you know, And then he was also the minor league pitcher of the year. He's now 79th in their top 100. Uh, they got Jairo Iriarta, uh, the Padres' eighth best prospect, and he's a was another pitching prospect. And then they got uh, Samuel Savala. He was the number seven uh, Padres prospect at the time. Thorpe probably has the best changeup in the minors. Uh, he came over to the Padres in a uh, the Juan Soto deal, so uh, he was also a highly uh, originally with the Yankees, highly regarded prospect prospects his fastball can get up to 95 um he got up to double a in the yankee system last year posted a 2.81 era 138 strikeouts at high a last year uh double a he had a 148 a 148 era 44 strikeouts to just five walks savala he's 19 tremendous potential at the plate 
he might actually be the man, the savior at right field. But he's only 19. It's going to be a little bit. Iriarte uh, pitched well in spring training. Uh, started 21 games last year in the minors between high A and double A ball. Posted a 3.49 ERA between those two levels with 120 strikeouts. His fastball is his best pitch. Can get up to 100 miles per hour. Uh, there was even rumors that, you know, he might project better as a closer. But, you know, they're going to try him out as a starter. Thorpe, he's now the Sox third best prospect, according to MLB Pipeline. Savala is six. Iriarte is ninth. Sorry, I had to take a coffee break there. Thorpe and Iriarte are uh, in double A right now. Uh, Savala is at high A. So that's what they got from the Padres in return for Dylan Cease. Uh, one of the reasons why Cease was not traded before spring training, obviously, was uh, general manager Chris Getz had a high price tag. It was once described as him asking for the sun and the stars. Uh, and then, for example, from the Reds, uh, 670 the scores, Bruce Levine, he heard that um, the Sox wanted uh, four top prospects, Rhett Lauder and Chase Petty, two pitchers, uh, highly rated uh, pitching prospects, they also wanted the number nine and number 11 prospects from the Reds. And the big reason, again, is Dylan Cease. Um, at, you know, he's always healthy. He has two years of contract control. And he was only making $8 million this year. Obviously, he uh, didn't. He was not size Cease last year. But he still had a FIP under four. So it shows you that he had a little bit bad luck because he had a, uh, an ERA over five or ERA over four. And a lot of people just believed, you know, he just needed to work on that slider. So what could they have gotten in similar in return from the Reds? Uh, the Reds do have a top 10 farm system, just like the Padres. And, you know, being a small market, they decided we, we want to keep our prospects. We, we want to keep our powder dry. So they signed Frankie Montez to see if he could return to his Oakland form. Um, so if the Sox... If the Reds were like, let's say the Reds just decided, hey, we're going to do this trade and we're going to try to get, you know, they negotiate down to a similar package. Uh, let's say the number, their number five prospect. Uh, that would have been uh, former Minnesota Twins uh, first round pick Chase Petty. He was acquired in um, the trade from the Reds when they, they dealt away Sonny Gray. And he uh, is the 90th best pitching prospect. Had a 1.95 ERA in high A and double A ball last year. Uh, has just one start at double A. Didn't pitch great. Gave up four runs uh, in four innings. Uh, did have a little bit of a minor elbow issue issue in 2023. Uh, but obviously he made it through. Uh, fastball can reach up to 96 miles per hour. Has a plus slider. And uh, that can miss bats. Has a good, you know, has to work on his changeup. And then they would be throwing in Cam Collier and uh, Carlos Jorge, or George. Uh, you know, I, I tried to look up the pronunciation. Collier, left-handed bat. He's uh, off to a 364, 364, 545 slash line started in high A. 250, 246 average last year, uh, 705 OPS. Jorge off to a slow, or George off to a slow start, 188, 235, 30, 375 slash line. Uh, hit 282 combined between high and low A, although he hit a 239 at high A um, last year. And then the bullpen, bullpen arms, I reached out to a uh, lockdown Reds, Jeff Carr. Uh, he said it would be Lucas Sims. That would be the comparable uh, pitcher in his late 20s that they could throw in. So looking at it, it it's they would not have gotten – two pitching prospects. They would have gotten one. And I think that was the thing that Chris gets valued was getting more pitching, especially in the rumors. So would they have gotten better prospects from the reds? I, I think it's, I think it's the same. I think it would be a wash. You know, could they use a third baseman in their system? They got Brian Ramos. So, you know, I, I, I think the Sox made the better deal with the San Diego Padres. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to move on to what is it you say you do here, here on Locked On White Sox. Sp 
spring has sprung, and that means spring cleaning, whether that means stocking up on uh, cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for new spring clothes. Make sure you're using Ibotta, a get real cash back with every purchase. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, that flight you've been eyeing, or the fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, just add your offers up, add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. Join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers, including all your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. And hey, right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Player App Store and use the code LOCKEDONMLB. Hey, are you watching uh, Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have uh, have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. And I know I just shouted there, raised my voice a little bit. But hey, it's not, you know, going crazy. And making uh, points just, you know, contradictory points just for the sake, sake of gaslighting. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis and opinions and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And uh, welcome back to Locked On White Sox. Again, I'm your host, Todd Welter. Thank you for listening. You know, the one thing I forgot to uh, mention in my uh, little background, I do uh, have experience covering teams. I um, I uh, did cover the Milwaukee Brewers for from about 2004 to 2014, so for about 10 seasons. I uh, also worked in their scoreboard operations from 2003 to 2014. Um, I went to Marquette University, and I uh, got an internship in their scoreboard, and then I stayed there for about 11 years and then uh, left to start a family. Um, so... I uh, have covered teams, covered um, covered the Brewers. I, I did get to be in Ozzy's presence when he came to Miller Park, and th- those press conferences are awesome. Were awesome the Ozzy Guillen press conferences because there was the informal press conference. It either usually happened before or after, where you had like you had to have your mic off, and he would just go off. You know the the, the stuff that was uh um. You know, you couldn't actually quote them, but it was just entertaining. And then there would be the real one. Um, so I uh, covered the Brewers and it was a great time. Um, you know, and I also did it for so I did it for uh, their local, the, the local flagship News Radio 620 WTMJ. I worked there from uh, 04 to 2010 as the producer of Sports Central with Bill Michaels. And then um, I also freelance for the Associated Press. I uh, did that obviously a little bit longer and um, got to cover the Brewers. So the Brewers are my National League team. When you watch that many Brewers baseball games, especially in the scoreboard operations, they they tend to grow, to you, grow on you. And I watched them when they were absolutely awful, like White Sox awful right now. So that's the other reason why White Sox fans, it can get better. You know, in, in 2003, my intern year, uh, this, they only won like 95 or 67 games. They had Scott Podsednik who had just emerged. Like he was a rookie year, uh, Brady Clark. They were, they were platooning in right field 
Brady Clark and Ben Grieve. Okay, so they eventually, as you saw, built up their minor league team and, and you know got to the playoffs in 2008. Got to the playoffs again in 2011. Did a little bit of a rebuild very quickly. You know that's how you turn things around quickly. And as you've seen, they've been on a great run recently. Reason why I bring that up is uh, I did get to cover Martin Maldonado, the White Sox catcher who is this week's "What is it you say you do here?" Um, trust me, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get eventually, uh, you know, sound effects in here. Uh, I'm just trying to learn how to operate the equipment functionally. So please just give me time. Uh, but Martin Maldonado, what is it you say you do here? Cause right now in nine games, 24 plate appearances, he has a 0.087 batting average. 0.125 OBP, 130 slugging percentage. He's a negative 33 WRC plus. He is an auto, not only is he an automatic out, he might as well just not even come up to the plate. You know, he might as well just not even have a bat. He just might as well stand there and just hope he gets four balls. Now, I get why he's on the team, and I actually advocated. Um, on a different fan site, fan sided site I wrote for or write for uh, the Windy City, that the Sox should actually sign Martin Maldonado. But my logic was, it was better than trading for Salvador Perez and his massive contract. Like you know, if I'm going to pick the lesser of two evils, I'll pick the guy on the cheap one year deal because there's never such thing as a bad one year deal. Danny Parkins from 670 The Score taught you know me that as I'm a regular listener and yes I am a member of the mob. But this is like literally an automatic out, and I get he was also brought in mostly for handling the pitchers in his defense, but his defense has eroded over the years. Yes, the numbers still Matt, you know, he, he was a 10.8 defensive F war player last year. But he's not exactly got the gun of an arm to get the base dealers out anymore. You know, and those are the things. If you're going to be an automatic out and not even provide any pop as a catcher, he's projected by fan graphs to hit seven home runs this year. You know, what you want, if you're using a catcher basically for defensive purposes, you at least want some pop. And I know he did uh, bash 15 homers last year. Like, that's what you're hoping for, but he's not even connecting with the ball. So you got to do all those extra things, all those extra little things that much better. And he's not doing that. I mean, guy's 36 and or 37, and he is just not like, you know, he, he's just catching the ball. And that, that that's great. That, that That's valuable. But you got to provide something more than frame the pitch up and make sure the, the pitchers are ready. It's needed. It's a big part of the job. It's better than whatever Yasmani Grandal did. But, you know, the whole point is, is throw base dealers out and at least hit like 150. You know, hit the ball over the fence, man. This guy's not doing anything except, you know, and I get it, it's a one year deal, but just, Give me something else than just this. Like, you know, it's even weak contact. When I saw him hit a single, it was like he just, you know, he just kind of swatted at it. You know, I think he almost knows, like, oh, I'm going to be an automatic out. I'll just sit here. You know, and that's why uh, I, I want to talk about, um, you know, hey, it, it, it's Corey Lee's time. He needs to be the everyday catcher. And we'll talk about that next on Locked On White Sox. Hey, it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I lost my spot here, guys. 
My bad. Socks. Uh, bet on everything. You know, that's 150 bucks. Win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. I've never been one to wager on a game, and I once put a future bet on the Bears to win the Super Bowl, and they went 5-11, and and that was Mark Trestman's final season. So just showing you, um, you know, my ability to gamble. But once I took this hosting gig on, uh, you know, as I said yesterday, I asked on the text group chats if anyone's using it. My old college roommate immediately said he loves FanDuel, loves the experience, loves the ability to put together uh, some creative parlays to make the game day experience uh, that much more interesting and better. Now, obviously, he's playing to win. He he puts in his, you know, serious bets, but he likes to throw in, like, let's say a, a prop bet of the game going into overtime. And the thing that he loves the most he doesn't have to wager that much to see if that future will pay off. So there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I want to make this game a little bit more interesting. Um, so what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win. That's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Hey, are you struggling to close deals? B2B selling is tougher than ever, and that's why I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job changes, or which account you should prioritize. It shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the, with the people that matter. Excuse me. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And get a 60-day free trial at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOn. That is LinkedIn.com slash LockedOn for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Go to LinkedIn.com slash LockedOn and get started. All right, welcome back to Locked On White Sox, your team every day. And just want to, if you're still with me, you're either um, cutting the grass or you're doing something that, you know, is like, hey, I just need something in my ear and I don't want to listen to music. Or you're just a hardcore White Sox fan like me. And I really appreciate you listening. You know, thank you for sticking with me. I got some compliments today or, and yesterday when I announced that, you know, when I did my first show. I really appreciate it. And like I said, I love the White Sox social media community the, from the 108. Those are those guys are awesome. They're just they, they make being a White Sox fan great. And, you know, we got a great content community in the White Sox fan base. You know, the the ratio for podcasts to White Sox fans is it's pretty low. It's like two to one because, you know, a lot of White Sox fans are hitting the eject button. But they're just they're outstanding. You know, I said Southside Sox does great work. Um, Sox on 35th. Sox Machine. They're great. Um, you know, there's just so many, you know, Sox in the basement. Good guys talk black. Nick Markowski. Um, you know, he, he's got a great podcast with his co-host. Uh, you also have a CHGO. White Sox, Herb Lawrence, Sean Anderson, Vinny Duber, one of my favorites. I just ask that you listen to me first and then, yeah, check those guys out. But, you know, uh, South Burbs Hitman, um, you know, they're, they're just, they're, there's so many great sites out there and there's just so many great people. And, you know, uh, we all talked about, we could play in the sandbox nicely together. You know, that, that, that's just what I'd like to see. You know, to the fan that is super positive, especially like um, on social media, and the, the fan that's really negative, can you just stop telling the, the negative fan to stop being so negative? That That's just who they're going to be. It's fine. You can question your team. 
And you should, because again, they got Martin Maldonado doing absolutely nothing in the lineup. But the guy that has been at least doing something is Corey Lee. He's got a 316, 350, 526 slash line in nine games and 20 appearances. Now, last year, it looked like he was not going to be a Major League Baseball player. 077 average in uh, 24 games. It was looking pretty like the, the White Sox got ripped off from the Astros when they made that deal to acquire him. This year, though, he looks very comfortable at the plate, made some adjustments in the offseason, and that's my catcher. Yep, I'm going to die on that hill. There's very few hills I'm going to die on, but Corey Lee needs to be the catcher. I know Edgar Cuaro, he's the future, and I'm very excited for him. And Corey Lee probably is going to be nothing more than a backup catcher, but when you got Mar- Martin Maldonado doing absolutely nothing, Corey Lee's got to be the starting catcher. You know, let Mar- Maldonado mentor him. Let Maldonado maybe catch, I don't know, he can, he can catch Mike Clevenger. When he comes up, Ugh, Mike Clevenger. Excuse me, I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Let's wash that out with some coffee. I had to put a little whole milk in. I'm out of half and half. <sighs> um, just, gosh. But Corey Lee at least has the ability to run the bases, and he's able to do a little bit more offensively, and I, you can always work on that de- defense, unless you're Yasmani Grandal. But, Let's go with Corey Lee. It's a lost season. Let's see what he can do. At the very least, you got a cheap backup catcher for the next couple of years. So let him give him some time. Let him get acclimated. You know, let's see if this is more than just a, a hot start. You know, let's see if he can uh, produce and if he's up for the task. I mean, that's what the White Sox just need. I mean, again, the season's all about individual play. It's not about wins and losses because they're going to be terrible. This team was built to lose no matter what Pedro Grafal tries to tell you. So let's get Corey Lee in there. Designate Max Stassi for assignment once he gets healthy. Please don't send him down. Please don't send Corey Lee down. And I have a feeling they're going to do it. Just like when they called up Oscar Colas for one game and then sent him back. You know, let's... Go with Corey Lee. And again, I know it's not a great alternative, but there's not many great alternatives this year. Except for Colson Montgomery eventually comes up and becomes the everyday starting shortstop. But that's not going to happen for a while. Anyways, that this wraps up this edition of Locked On White Sox. Uh, before I get out of here, Locked On has launched um, the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's also available on amazon fire um tv and the free fire tv channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And uh, we'll be back next week to talk about a whole new week of White Sox baseball and maybe some better days are ahead. And uh, let me know your thoughts on today's topics regarding the what if Cease went to uh, the Reds on Twitter. Uh, You can uh, find me at Todd J. Dub. That's uh, T-O-D-D-J-D-U-B. Or email me at LockedOnWhiteSox at gmail.com. Have a great day. See you Monday.